Hello chickens. So today for history, I'm going to teach you how to do the cheesy slide. <gasps> Black leather gloves, no secret. Buckles on the jack. Mm -mm. Let me show you how to go, go right foot up, left foot slide, left foot up, right foot slide. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, just kidding. I'm not going to do that for history. But something even more exciting, democracy and citizenship. So today, the pages I want to look at so that you'll be ready for your test, your open book Moodle test on democracy, which is on the 27th of August. So today we are looking at page 144. 145 and 146. Okay, so it is going to be a bit of a longer video just to go through some important facts. And then at the end, if you haven't finished activity one on page 143, please go open your books and finish that. And then read over the four pages for the, the Moodle quiz. Okay. So let us go and share the screen and find our textbook. Hockey dokey. Right, page 144. How people govern themselves in a democracy, our national government. Okay, so in the new words, we've got democracy, which we're going to look at now. Uh, voting. We talked about last time. Government is a group of people in charge of the country. Democratic elections, we talked about that yesterday or the day before. Citizens, we talked about that. Okay, so if we look at the top, a democracy means that all the people of a country have a right to choose who their leaders will be. People choose their leaders by voting for them. In a democracy, the leaders with the most votes will form the largest part of the government. Okay. First democratic government in South Africa, 1994. What year? Say it out loud. <laughs> Great. Okay. So for many years, South Africa was ruled by a government that was not democratic. Most of the people in South Africa were not allowed to vote. They also didn't have many rights. Many people fought against the unfair apartheid government in different ways. The people were tortured and put in jail. They were forced to leave the country and many people also lost their lives. If you are forced to leave the country, that means you are exiled. Eventually, in 1994, South Africa held its first democratic election. This meant that all adult citizens of South Africa now had the right to choose who they wanted as leaders. And there you can see a photo. People were very excited to take part in the first elections. They stood in long, long queues. And if you Google, you can see some of those queues were kilometers long, um, especially in the rural areas. They stood in long queues for hours waiting to cast their vote for the very first time. Okay. Right. Why can we say that democracy is a government by the people and for the people? Well, that's because the government was chosen by the people. So we all got to vote and elect who we wanted. The people who got the most election, uh, voting the most votes in the election, that political party ruled the country. Okay, so it is by the people, the voting, and for the people, for the people of the country, they got what they voted for. Okay, is the following situation an example of a democratic government? Why or why not? One man and his supporters have been ruling the country for over 20 years. The people of the country are afraid to disagree with what this ruler says because they will be put in jail or harmed in other ways. 
And I'm sure if you ask your parents, they know exactly what country this sounds like. One of our neighbors, neighboring countries for decades was ruled by an autocrat or a tyrant. So it's not a democracy, it's an autocracy. And that person just decides everything. And anyone who doesn't want to go along with it, play the game, harmed, jailed, whatever. Okay, so that's not a, an ideal situation at all. Right, now political party is a group of people who have similar ideas about how the country should be run. And each party decides who its leaders will be. Political parties work really hard to get people to support them. They put up posters all over the show. You've seen them on the lampposts in the row. You've seen them on the highway, billboards, TV, magazines, everywhere. Okay. Um, in South Africa, elections are held every five years. And in the weeks before the election, the different parties will try to get people's votes and try to get their support. Okay, there you'll see they put up posters, flyers or like pamphlets. They have meetings and rallies to encourage people to vote for them. Okay, we do see on that poster, we see the DA and let me look at my textbook. Mm, is that the ANC? It's kind of cut off in mine. And my eyes are 52 years old, so I don't know. Um, okay. Then um, it says, on the day of the election, and some of you have been with your parents, people can vote for the party they want to support. So they're going to go to a school or a church or a hall where they are demarcated, and then they take a ballot paper, and it's, got a, it's a long thing like this, and you get two. You get one for the country, and you get one for your municipality. So we'll have South Africa and Ekuruleni. Ekuruleni. Okay. And then you mark the ballot paper for your choice. And then the votes are counted, and they announce on TV, newspapers, radio, internet, who won the election. Okay. And a very important thing, when you put your cross, you have to put a cross in the block of the party that you want to rule the country. If that cross goes outside of the box, it's called a spoilt vote. Doesn't count. If you put more than one cross, it's a spoilt vote. It doesn't count. Okay, remember that for when you're 18. Okay. Right, now up until... Page 146. See me going on a little roller coaster right there. Up until 1994, the National Party, who's known as the NP, ruled the country, and South Africa was not a democracy. Only in the 1994 elections did South Africa become a democracy. Table 1 shows the results of the 94 democratic elections when all adults had the opportunity to vote. Almost two thirds of over 19 million people who voted wanted the party called the African National Congress, ANC, to be their leaders. And the person in charge of the ANC or at the top or the helm of the ship was Nelson Mandela. Okay, so he became president of South Africa. And there you can see on the table, okay, how, what percentage of votes did the ANC get? 63%. So when we said um, almost two thirds, two thirds would be 66%, right? Oh, there goes my earring. Okay, so it's 33 and a third, 66 and a third, and then 100%. Okay, the National Party got 20% of the votes. The IFP and Carter Freedom Party, 11%. The Freedom Front, 2 
Democratic Party 2, the POC 1, and other small parties altogether 1. Okay, so that was the result. So what I want you to do, I want you to go and finish page 143's activity if you haven't. And then I want you to go over these pages that we've just done and be prepared for the next lesson where you will have your Moodle quiz. That's on the 27th of August. Whoop, whoop. And then the next time that I see you, we will be talking about, okay, you'll be doing the quiz. And then the next time, the video will be about the Constitution. And what I want you to do is um, on the 27th of August, when you do the quiz, I want you to go and look for it at the top of the exam section. Wait, am I telling the truth? No, I'm not. <laughs> Scratch, cut that out, rewind. Then on the 27th of August, I want you to go to term three. And under there, you will find the Moodle quiz on democracy and citizenship. It's for 10 marks. You go there and you finish the quiz. So that's us for today. Over and out. Study, study, study.